Hello. So far in doing problems related to bond prices, we've used two formulas. There's the basic formula, which relates the price of a bond at time zero to as the present value of the coupons with respect to the yield rate, plus the present value of the redemption amount at the end of the term. Also, in recent videos, we've used something called Nakam's formula, which relates the price of a bond to uh, the present value of the redemption amount. And it also especially is useful in the case where uh, the coupon amount or the redemption value is not the same as the par value or face value. It brings in the idea of a modified coupon rate to think about the price of the bond. There are two other formulas I want to use in this video. These four formulas total make up what you might call the four formulas, which you see here, or if you want to be extra dramatic, maybe even call them the big four formulas, to find the price of a bond that happens to not be redeemable at par, which again is an unusual situation, but we'll think about that, it does come up sometimes. Like in the last video, we will need the modified coupon rate little g, and we will introduce a new quantity called capital G, which is also called the base amount. I'm taking this from Kellison's book, mostly we take from Groverman's book. Uh, it's a pretty basic problem. Um, I could have easily made up a problem like this on my own, but you know, I'm staying with my tradition of usually going and taking problems from these books. So we have, again, a pretty basic situation, 10-year bond that's got a $100 par value, also called the face value, denoted by capital F. It's got 10% coupons that are payable semi-annually, twice a year, like usual. It's redeemable at 105, a price that's different than the face value, which again is unusual, but does happen sometimes, we'll call that C. It's bought to yield 8% convertible semi-annually, again, like usual. So the effective semi-annual coupon rate is going to be half of this, 5%, and the effective semi-annual yield rate is going to be half of this, 4%. Two things, find the price, and also do it in four ways. Verify that all four of these big formulas produce the same answer. So this problem is going to be pretty heavy on writing down some numbers and calculator usage. I'm going to try to be as efficient as I can be in my calculator usage and go as fast as possible. It will be a bit tedious that way though. Uh, if you feel like you have no problem thinking about these formulas and using them, you might want to skip ahead to the last few minutes where I will come back and talk about especially formulas B and C and how to think about them um, beyond just the basic application of plugging and chugging when they happen to be most useful based on what you happen to know. All right, having lots of formulas is handy when you need to be able to calculate lots of things. So what are these formulas? Let's start with A, the basic formula. We wrote it initially like this. This is, first of all, the present values of the coupons. F times R is the coupon amounts. We're getting N of those at yield rate, semi-annual yield rate J. This is your present value of an annuity immediate symbol. Then we add on C times V to the N, the redemption amount discounted back in time to time zero. We can also write it this way where we define k to equal this present value right there, okay? So that's the basic formula. Think about that in terms of timelines. Again, recently we've talked about something called Makem's formula. It's our second formula. We can write it this way. We introduced little g, the modified coupon rate in the last video, video number 100. It's defined by this equation. C times g should equal f times r take this modified coupon rate times the redemption amount to get the coupon amount f times r. k again is the same thing as it was over there. It's the present value of the redemption amount. Again, g is this modified coupon rate. j again is the uh, semi-annual yield rate. Okay, that formula can be used to find the price. The next formula is a new formula. Premium discount formula is its name. Looks like this. These are all quantities you've seen before. As a little exercise, you should try to derive this on your own. I'll give you some hints. You could substitute this quality in for V to the N uh, up here. And when you do that thing, actually right there, because you want to get this in terms of AN, into that basic formula and rearrange to see that you can get this. And the fourth formula, D, is called the base amount formula. It looks like this. It introduces a new quantity, capital G, called the base amount. It's defined by this equation. So it would be an amount so that semi-annual um, interest payments at yield rate J related to this base amount G give you the same as the coupon amounts. 
course, with these two equations, you can solve for little g and capital G. Little g would be fr divided by c. Capital G would be fr divided by j. All right, so now we get to the kind of tedious part of this video. I'm going to write down all the quantities that we need and use the formulas, and again, try to be as efficient as I can be with calculator usage. So again, if that sounds too boring, um, you might want to again skip ahead to the last few minutes. Though if you feel like you want some advice about calculator usage and storing things in the memory, this might be a good thing to watch. Let's start by writing everything down. We know F is 100. We know R is half of 10% is 0 0.05. We know then F times R, the coupon amount is 5. I won't bother putting dollars in here even though Kellison did. All the money amounts would be in dollars. Next, we know the redemption amount is 105. The number of periods, the number of half years is 2 times 10 is 20. 10 year periods and a 10 year term overall, but semi annual coupons. So, the number of periods for the coupons is 20. J, the uh, yield rate, semi annual, would be 8% divided by 2 is 4%. This would imply that V sub J is 1 over 1 plus J is 1 over 1.04. I'm going to make use of calculator storage. You may want to write these numbers down. 1.04, take its reciprocal. There it is, that's V. I'm going to store that in register 0. But you may want to write it down. So I'm going to try to save time by not writing things down. By the way, I think I maybe mentioned this before. Other books do use I for the semi-annual yield rate. It's uh, Broverman's book who uses J. In fact, Kellison uses I. All right, so that's stored in register zero. What else do we need to know? We need to know a n j, which would be a 20.04, which we can calculate from our memorized formula using v. Raise that to the 20th power. Subtract from one. Divide by 0 0.04. Looks like a n is about 13.59. You might want to write that down. I will store this in register 1 and not bother writing it down. Store 1. What next? How about K? The present value of that future redemption amount. <clears throat> this is going to be the same thing as 105 times 1.04 to the negative 20th power. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, uh, so let's calculate that. V is in register 0. Raise that to the positive 20th power is the same as 1.04 to the negative 20th power times 105. About 47.92. I will store that in register 2. Two more th quantities to calculate. The, the two Gs, the little g and capital G. Little g would be FR over C. That'll be 5 over 105, which does make a nice fraction, 121st. But we're probably going to want to store that as a decimal in the calculator. 21, take its reciprocal. I'll store that in register 3. 0 0.04761905. Stored in register 3. Capital G, the base amount, is going to be F times R over J. That's going to be... 5 over 0 0.04, and that turns out to equal 125. You can check, and that's pretty simple. I won't bother storing that. Now we are on to the formulas, and using them to confirm we get the same answer. So the basic formula, I'll write in this form, frange plus k, ah, that's a joke, f times r, a n j, frange, plus k, maybe you've thought of that joke already. Uh, probably would be most efficient to use an first, which is in register 1. Recall 1. We know f times r is 5, so I multiply this by 5. 67.95 is the present value of your coupons. Add on the present value of your redemption amount, k, which is in register 2, 47.92. And you get 115.87. And that is the correct final answer for the price. This bond is being priced at a premium. The price at time zero is higher than the redemption amount of 105. Priced at a premium, and I'll come back to that idea at the end. 
Second formula was Makem's formula. Looks like this. Again, thinking about efficient calculator usage. C is simple, 105, K is not as simple. Let's get K in there first, and register two, recall two. Subtract that from 105, so go negative plus 105. This difference is about 57.08. Multiply by G over J, so I'll multiply by G first, which is in register three. Work times recall three. Divide by J, which is dividing by 0 0.04. That amount, that thing right there, is the same as the present value of all the coupons. It was the same as this, because I'm just adding k now, which again is in register 2, to get the same answer, 115.87. So we confirm we get the same thing. We are on to the two new formulas now. <coughs> Premium discount formula looks like this. All right, efficient calculator usage. That's kind of complicated. This is a five. C times J is 105 times 0 0.04. I think that ends up being 4.2. 105 times 0 0.04. Yeah, that's 4.2. Five minus 4.2 is 0 0.8. AN is in register one times 0 0.8 is a positive quantity. That's why the bond is selling at a premium here based on this premium discount formula, this quantity is positive. A and of course is always positive, but so it's the sign of this that determines whether you're selling at a premium or the opposite, a discount when P is less than C. We add on C to this, C being 105, and we get the same thing, 115.87. All right, finally we are on to the base amount formula, P is capital G plus C minus capital G in parentheses times V to the N. Uh, G and C are simple quantities. It's only V to the N that takes a little work. There's V, raise it to the 20th power. We get that, C is 105, capital G is 125. This difference is negative 20. Multiply this by 20, put a negative sign there. This bond is selling at a price less than its base amount, whatever that might mean in a practical sense. Probably not typically told the base amount, but maybe it would be sometimes. Capital G is 125. I add 125 to this and get the same answer. So I have done the problem. I have verified that all four formulas give you the same answer, and that same answer is $115.87. That would be the price. So let's now end the video by just talking a little bit about, um, especially formulas B and C here. Really, Makem's formula could be thought of as being a premium slash discount formula as well, because both of these formulas help you see the relationship between P and C uh, based on other relationships. In Makem's formula, you're relating little g and j. Uh, let's see, let's bring the Makem's formula down over here. You know, if little g equals j, that's equivalent to g over j equaling 1, which is equivalent to the price being k plus c minus k, which is c. And the bond is priced at the redemption value. G being bigger than J is equivalent to G over J being bigger than a 1. Think about this formula. That's equivalent to P being bigger than K plus C minus K if this thing is bigger than 1, uh, which simplifies to C. The bond is sold, sold at a premium, which is the situation in this problem. Little g is bigger than J. Little g was this thing, which was bigger than 0.04. If little g is less than j, then the ratio is less than 1, and p is ultimately less than c. Okay, It's being sold at a discount. This is called a premium. This is called a discount. If the um, c happens to equal f, if the price redemption value happens to equal the 
face value or par value, then g equals r, and you can talk about these relationships between um, these quantities when you're thinking about the relationship between r and j, which comes back to the premium discount formula as well. This gives you the relationship between p and c based on the relationship between r and j. If, if fr happens to equal cj, so that this is zero, then the price is the same as the redemption amount. If in the case where c equals f, uh, then it's the relationship between R and J that determines whether you're sold at, selling at a premium or discount. So that's the premium discount formula, and again, I'm saying you can think about it in the same kind of way, based in the usual case on the relationship between R and J. And this equation, I won't write it down, but you can think about the relationship between the price P and the base amount, capital G, if you want, based on the sign of this difference, whether it's positive or negative, in the same kind of way. And that's what I'll end this video with.